Good morning, Karen. Um, right. Thanks for meeting up with us uh, this morning. Well, we plan to do that. Um, kind of what I want to, to um, use this, this kind of time we've got together this morning is to spend some time um, talking about the experiences that you had um, that led up to kind of your, your most recent admission onto, into hospital and some of the experiences that you had kind of over the, the most recent years really in relation to, you know, we've talked about voice hearing and some ideas that you've had and the impact of that. And why it's not clear, I suppose, um, what necessarily absolutely caused those sorts of things, we might be able to um, begin to understand or figure out what's involved in the development of those sorts of things. Okay. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that sounds okay, yeah. Right. Is, is there anything else you'd want to talk about today? Um, no, I think I'd like to know a bit more about why these things have happened. Right, so yeah. is, that, is that what we're going to cover? Yeah, that, that kind of fits with what I yeah. kind of want to try and do today. Yeah. Um, and I suppose thinking about that, it's, it's, it's this kind of model that I'm going to talk about a, a bit called the stress vulnerability model. So I'll be talking a little bit about that as well in, in trying to kind of help us do that together. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So in terms of, I suppose, the starting point, um, can you just recap to me some of the kind of talk about your kind of most recent admission you've had onto the onto the ward and kind of what you were aware of was was happening for you? That I think that'd be a useful place to start. Um, I suppose what when I started becoming unwell yeah. before I came into hospital. Yeah, I think that'd be useful. Um, things you were aware of, things you kind of noticed were happening around you. Well, I suppose. Um, I started to get worse when um, just after Dad's funeral. Okay. Um, and I just noticed that um, I was hearing more voices, and um, I was thinking the neighbours were talking about me. Okay. I was quite frightened. Right. Um, uh -huh. And I, st I, I did stop going out. Right. Um, and doing things like keeping the curtains drawn. Right. Um, I, I just felt really scared. Right, okay, right. So that's, that's, I suppose that's the first time I just started just getting really frightened. Right. That's really good then, because you've really identified a number of things that we can think about in terms of uh, things that was occurring. Um, certainly, one of the significant things it sounds like to me was, was the death of, of Dad. Um, yeah. How long ago was that? Yeah. That was um, in the summer, so it was about, what is it now, about, it's about four or five months ago. Okay, okay. I was all right when, it, you know, I, I think I coped quite well. It was just after the funeral. Right, yeah. Okay. Where it started getting, right. um, you know, everybody had gone and I uh, was left on my own. And right. So just again, if you could just remind me, did you, you live with Dad? Yeah, he was, well, it's the house I grew up in. Okay. And um, so that probably, I was left on my own, so I'd never been on my own in the house. Right. Um, and we lived there as a family. Right. Okay. Right, so again, that, so if we, if we think about the death of Dad and what com comes with that, and you've identified some emotions, what, can, you, can we talk about that for a couple of minutes? What emotions kind of showed up for you at that time. Can you remember? Yeah. Um, when he died? Or yeah. yeah. I, was, I, was, I suppose I was um, obviously upset and um, again frightened that I was going to be on my own. Right. So this kind of feeling upset, emotionally upset, yeah. feeling frightened about, heck, I'm on my home, own now. Yeah. Yeah. So that, um, that, how did that make you feel? I suppose I, I was also getting butterflies in my stomach and okay. I was feeling sick. Right. And, um, and it just reminded me of when I was ill last time. Okay. So I was thinking, am I going to get ill again? Yes. So I was, I had similar feelings to right. when I was ill last time. Okay. So we've got all these emotions and then you, got, you talked about some physical things that you're aware of, feeling sick in your stomach, yeah. even with the butterflies. 
and kind of some of the thoughts around that, oh my God, I'm, I kind of hope I'm not going to kind of relapse and, and become unwell again. Yeah. So yeah. There, was, there was a fear of that, I guess, um, around. Yeah. And then I think you mentioned after that, it kind of the voices were becoming a little bit more, or aware of them a little bit more. Can you tell yeah. me a little bit more about those? They weren't so bad at the time when um, he actually died. I, I wasn't hearing anything then. Okay. But it was when just after the, after the funeral when I was in the house on my right. own. Could we talk about the voices for a couple of minutes? Is that would that be okay? Um, I'll try. I mean, I, that that might feel quite difficult for mm. you to do, but but um, if we kind of if you can we can do what we can do. Yeah. And we'll just talk about what you're feeling you're able to manage. Um, and just let me know if it gets a little bit too uncomfortable. Is that okay? Some of them were very pleasant. Okay, okay. So let, let's let's just kind of go and see what we can kind of um, work with okay. here. So the voices kind of showed up a little bit more after the the death of of, of your father. Can can you kind of um, tell me or give me some examples what sort of things they were talking to you about, Karen? Um. I could hear I could hear the neighbours right. saying I was selfish, okay. bitch, and um, I neglected him, my dad, and right. I hadn't cared for him, and okay. it was all my fault that he died. If I'd have done a better job, then right, um, he'd still be alive, and okay. they were saying I was dirty. Right. So these were voices, voices you think were from the neighbours. Yeah. I was convinced at the time. Okay, okay. And yeah. just, just to check out with you that you kind of, you kind of at home, you, you can't hear the neighbours through because you know, some, some properties you can. No, it's, yeah, it's a detached house. Okay, okay, right. But so. they, were, they did sound really loud. Right. As loud as I'm talking now or yeah. louder? Yeah, and some kept whispering in my ear as well. Okay. And, okay. and I could hear them at night when I was in bed whispering, saying, right. was, saying those horrible things about me. So they were really nasty, derogative things yeah. that we've talked about. Yeah. So how did that make you feel? I was just really frightened because I, I thought that they were going to come and get me. Right. So they felt quite threatening then. Yeah. Okay. So I had to make sure I, you know, put things up against the door to make sure they didn't get in the room, and okay. it was just terrible. Yeah. It sounds as though that must have been really, really mm. difficult for you, and emotionally it must have been quite hard um, to have to try and cope with, I guess. Mm. Yeah, okay, right. So, in, in a sense, if I come back and I mentioned at the start, this this kind of one of the the models that helps us to begin to understand what may be involved in in kind of development is is this thing called the stress vulnerability model. So, I, I, I kind of want to show you the diagram that kind of um, to illustrate what we've been talking about. Okay. Okay. So this is this is a diagram I'm be referring to. Ign ignore the bottom, the right. bottom one. Okay. So. It's, it's quite a simple diagram, really. It's basically two, two, um, two lines, vertical, horizontal. Um, and up on this line, we have what we call stress. Okay? And, and again, at the bottom, we have low stress. At the top, we, we have high stress. And along this bottom line, we have vulnerability. Again, low and high. Mm -hmm. okay? So low at this end, high at each, each of these corners. Uh, within this, this line that comes down here, we refer to that as a kind of a threshold. And if we kind of fall within that, we, we think we're okay. We're kind of managing life and everything's, everything's fine. If we kind of fall into this area, it's kind of the, the theory is that we, you know, we're kind of not, not coping so well, struggling a little bit more, possibly having the voices, etc. So just quickly then, if we think about stress on this kind of axis, and if we particularly think about the death and loss of dad, mm. if you had to rate that as being stressful, the low to high, where, where would you put yourself, Karen? It's way at the top. Right up, right up yeah. here. So yeah. incredibly stressful experience yeah. for you. So that that would be there, you see. And if we think about our early discussions that we've had on on this, and we think about vulnerability, really, about things that's happened to you throughout your life, in part. There is some ideas about some evidence around that the brain may in some way um, not work as, as, as good as it might do. But I don't, I don't, I don't want to stress that too much really. But it, there may be some, some dysregulation in the brain involved. But I think it's a more 
what's happened to you throughout your life. So if we talk very briefly about your early childhood experiences, what would they be, Karen? Um, I suppose uh, not good. Not good. Okay. Can we talk about that? Um, what do you mean by not good? Well, I didn't really get on with my mum. Okay. Um, in fact, yeah, she was quite nasty to me. Okay. So that's not a good relationship with your mum. She yeah. was nasty to you. Can you tell me a little bit more what, what that means, nasty? Can you, can you something that... I, um, I can remember she used to just... Um, some things like making me go to school in... Um, like the wrong clothes and things like that, like not in school uniform. And right. I used to get picked on for that. And right. She used to shout a lot. OK. Um, she did mm, she did drink a bit as well. OK. So she got worse when she'd had a drink. OK. So that sounds um, uh, a, a very difficult childhood that you had. Mm. It was, sounds like mum was quite harsh, hostile, Yeah. sometimes threatening. Difficult to judge how she'd be from day to day, would that, would that be right? Yeah, if she'd had a drink, that was it. OK. Okay. It was terrible. Okay. And the fact that sometimes she, you know, at school, did that kind of, how was you at school in relation to that? Um, you think about, think back to your schooling days. No, I used to get bullied. Okay. Because so I looked stupid. Okay. Okay, so you were bullied at school and you think, you, you have an idea that you look stupid. Yeah. Okay. Because I was, I was different because I wasn't, didn't have the same uniform on. And okay. Okay. So again, in terms, I'm just trying to make links here, that in terms of perhaps some uh, vulnerability that you had, that perhaps other people might have it, but in a different place, is, is based in part to your kind of early experiences of having this harsh, critical mum, kind of your experience at school, that again, bullying, and then perhaps you developing some ideas about feeling stupid or in some way being different. Um, so. In terms of, on that bottom line, we might say your vulnerability is kind of more to the high end. So if you've got a high vulnerability at this end, coupled with a high stressful event here, and if we mapped them across and, and met in that way, that would put you into this area, mm. yeah, where we've got it down as being ill. I'm not very keen on that word, but in terms of perhaps then that might trigger off some of the experiences that we've talked about around voice hearing, feeling threatened by other people. So does that make sense, Karen? So my vulnerability now would be what's just happened to my dad? Well, I think, I I mean, sometimes it's difficult to distinguish between stress and vulnerability. I, I would probably, the, the loss of dad is a recent event and, okay. and kind of experiencing that you know, quite hard and, and stressful for you, so I'd put that there. Okay. I think your vulnerability is primarily comes out of your early childhood experience of, of being bullied, having that harsh, difficult experience, and how that left you feeling about yourself a bit sad, and your ability to cope um, with, okay. with these stressful situations. Okay. I guess the good news if, you know, about this is that we all can fit into this model. So you're no different or unusual or odd than anybody else. Because I've got certain vulnerabilities and the way I cope with stress, you know, it's just in a different place. Okay. So you're like, you're like, we're all the same. Does that make sense? But not everybody hears voices. Not everybody hears voices. And we don't know for sure why that is. This is a, a model to help us understand the vulnerability. So it could be your childhood experiences. There may be some issues with the brain. It may be that some of the mental health problems we've talked about may be some family connection. There may be some history in the family around that. Okay. Okay. So, but so vulnerability is is different in different places. But we've all we've all got some vulnerabilities. Okay. So just just briefly. Um, in terms of going back to stress, what, what sort of things did you notice from the death of dad? These voices are appearing. 
the, from the neighbours and they're being quite derogatory. How did you respond in relation to that? What did you find yourself doing? Just hiding away. Hiding away, OK. Locking the doors and shutting the curtains. OK. And I needed to protect myself. OK. So that kind of makes sense that you would do that if you feel that people are talking about you and threatening mm -hmm. you in some way, that you would seek to try and keep yourself kind of safe, shutting the curtains, locking the door, hiding away. Okay, so that, that kind of makes sense. Mm. But in some respects, that might, the question is, is whether that, that kind of brings on more stress by being very isolatory, being very alone mm. in, in some way, and whether that's actually adding to the kind of stress that you're experiencing. I think the final thing for me, I just want to, to flag up, I think, A, the, you know, we've talked about this is a way to help us begin to understand, possibly, kind of some of the experiences we've talked about that it can happen to to anybody we're all can fit into this model quite clearly um, I think the other thing final thing is that probably gives us an opportunity to think about okay when stress comes along is there a different way that we can begin to work with it is there things we could do that kind of helps us to manage that stress in a different way rather than just just kind of retreating away shutting curtains locking the door not 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 responding to phone calls is there a different way and mm. perhaps we can talk about that a little bit later about developing a care plan that when we notice this this dynamic process occurring we can actually perhaps work towards doing something a little bit more kind of um, proactive that helps you cope a little bit better does that does that kind of make sense yeah, I guess so, yeah. OK, yeah. OK. Any, any, anything you're not sure about or quick questions at this point, Karen? Um, it's a lot to take in. Yeah, I um, suppose it's about knowing when, when I'm getting... I don't know when I'm getting stressed. OK, OK. Well, I do, because I hear voices, but yeah. it's probably too late, is it? Well, well, kind of what we need to do is probably spend some time later on begin to identify in terms of development of a, of a relapse plan, as we kind of would call it, okay. and begin to be, be able to note, write down, identify certain things that you, you kind of aware of and noticed that you begin to do or, or things that you kind of are aware of that kind of might be an early warning sign. So we need to spend some time working that up. Okay. Yeah? Okay, that sounds good. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, right, thanks for time this morning okay. and we'll we'll book another another time for, for the next session. Okay. All right, thanks Karen.